Hello everyone and welcome to Graziella TV. I'm your host Graziella Barada. This is part one of the Bikini Plan series. We've all had enough of winter, God knows I have, and so have our bodies. Now it's time to get them ready for the upcoming bikini season. I've got an easy to follow plan to fit all types of fitness levels and we're going to do it together. For the next three weeks, I will be offering free one-on-one -on -one coaching to all, yes, all who join my email list at GrazielaTV.com. Now let's get started with your bikini plan. Okay, so are you ready to shed some fat and build some muscle? So many think that this is such an elusive goal and it really doesn't have to be. First, we're going to discuss some of the top mistakes that people make when embarking on a diet and fitness plan. And then I'm going to give you some guidelines to make your bikini plan a success. Having gone through quite a bit of personal training in my pageant competition years, as well as being a dancer and fitness trainer myself, I have compiled this list of diet and exercise mistakes that I see over and over again. Number one, not having an actual plan. Most people think that cutting out some carbs and using a few random machines at the gym that you've joined but seldom show up at will do the trick. Chances are that if you haven't already been working out and eating mindfully, it may do the trick temporarily. Your body may respond to those changes, but soon after it won't be enough. And for many of you, it already isn't enough to achieve the bikini results that you're after. You need a tailored plan to your diet and fitness needs because our bodies are highly complex mechanisms. That's why it's important to follow a plan created by a fitness and diet expert. We're going to go over some basics to make it simple to remember. Number two, too fast and furious. While it's great to be enthusiastic and motivated, fast and furious is not such a great approach for your body. By that I mean specifically with exercise, many try to do too much exercise all at once with little to no instruction or guidance. They end up getting super sore or injured, thus postponing regular exercise and deterring the entire plan. What you want to do is gradually build intensity so that your body is not so in shock and able to stay on track. We'll get into the physical part in just a moment. The same goes with the diet, believe it or not. Number three, doing only one of two parts. This is a biggie. Diet and exercise go hand in hand and complement each other. So many people make the mistake of just relying on one of these two elements to create change in their health and fitness. But combining the two is where the real magic happens. Number four, eating diet food. Foods labeled as diet food are mostly packaged processed foods that are more marketing than nutrition. Be smart, read food labels to see exactly what's in there. Now if you're confused about what to eat, don't worry, we'll go over that in just a moment. Now we're going to go over some basic do's and don'ts for your diet. Number one, read food labels. It's amazing what you can learn by reading food labels. Not only will you know exactly what you're eating, but you'll be able to relate how you feel after eating certain ingredients from one product to another. For example, I learned that foods that contain soy protein upset my stomach and cause a mild allergic reaction for me. Be sure to read food labels every time you buy a product. It'll take a little bit longer in the supermarket, but it's well worth it. Number two is limit dairy products. It is believed by many that dairy food from a cow is considered to be food for the calf and not for humans. Because the cow's milk is designed to fatten baby calves who are significantly larger than humans biologically, it is definitely something to consider consuming in great moderation. When choosing dairy products, they must be organic, as anything that isn't will contain growth hormone, which also makes humans grow fat, and plenty other chemicals. Raw, organic, and unhomogenized dairy is the best option, but may be difficult to find. Opt for the closest version of that that you can find in your area, which for most of us means organic pasteurized dairy. Next, drink spring distilled or filtered water. Most tap water is not pH balanced, which can lead to disease. Google it. It contains an abundance of harmful chemicals. Choose spring distilled or filtered water instead. Do your research and be sure to get a filter that removes all harmful chemicals. Next, you want to eat food with value. When you think about nourishing your body, you want to choose foods that have good value for the amount of calories that you're eating. 
A donut has very low nutritional value, but a high calorie count. A better calorie would be a whole grain roll, which not only provides a substantial amount of energy, calories, but will sustain your hunger for longer and provide you with some essential nutrients and fiber. Do wait at least two hours after eating to work out. Working out any sooner after you've eaten will only burn the calories you just ate and not any stored fat. We want to burn the stored fat. Okay, next, have your cake and eat it too. Yes, you can have your cake and eat it too. It's important to allow yourself the treat on occasion. If you deprive yourself all too often of these treats, you may just one day boycott your healthy new lifestyle and gorge on everything that you've deprived yourself of. With that said, treats should be had in moderation. It's important to note that if you're going to cheat, it should ideally be with a natural and if possible, organic version of what you're craving. For example, something I crave, burger and fries. So if you want a burger and fries, make it yourself from high quality natural ingredients or go to a trusted restaurant like Better Burger in New York City that makes organic and environmentally responsible food. Discipline yourself to eat a regular, healthy diet and allow yourself a treat whenever you want. Chances are, if you're eating a regular, healthy diet, your junk food cravings are going to diminish at some point. Whenever you do want a treat, you won't feel as guilty because you know you've eaten good food and you can really enjoy your treat. So go ahead, have your cake and eat it too. Next, let's go over some don'ts. First big no-no, do not use artificial sweeteners. All artificial sweeteners, such as saccharin, aspartame, Equal, Splenda, and others will make you fat and cause numerous medical problems. Stevia is recommended as a non-calorie, all-natural sweetener made from the stevia plant. There are many brands available in numerous health food stores, but be sure to get pure stevia with no other additives. Another alternative to sugar or artificial sweeteners is agave nectar, which comes from the agave plant. It is much sweeter than sugar, but has a lower glycemic index, allowing your blood sugar to remain more level than with sugar, which is really important with your metabolism and losing weight. Next, do not eat white sugar or flour. White sugar and flour are made white by using bleach, and bleach is not healthy, period. Additionally, white sugar and flour are stripped of nutrients during the chemical process with the bleach and possibly other chemicals as well. White flour has far less nutritional value than its whole grain counterpart. Remember, eat food with value. Next, a big no-no, do not eat anything with monosodium glutamate, MSG. MSG is an additive chemical that makes you fat and can cause all kinds of medical problems as well. I'm sure many of you are well aware of it, but it's in many more foods than you think. So it's important to read food labels as MSG is disguised with other words such as spices or other spices, artificial flavoring, hydrolyzed vegetable protein, etc. It's virtually in all fast food and chain restaurants, and that's why they're so addicting making America fat. Do not eat hydrogenated anything. Hydrogenation is a process that makes healthy fats into unhealthy fats, the now infamous trans fats. They cause weight gain, but more dangerously can lead to a number of health problems, including heart disease, high cholesterol, obesity, and more. Anytime you read the word hydrogenated, stay away. Next, do not eat fast food. Yeah, even their salads. Fast food chain restaurants make an abundant use of MSG and the lowest quality food you can find in the world. This is the last thing you want to eat because fast food causes weight gain and major health problems. There's no benefit to eating fast food. If you think they're cheap eats, well think about this. You can pay less for food now, but pay more for countless medical bills later, not to mention the ultimate price of your health. So think about it, spend a little bit more money on better quality food now and less on medical bills later and live a healthier, happier life. Do not eat anything with high fructose corn syrup. There's a lot of controversy around that, but it's sad to know that high fructose corn syrup is in countless packaged American products because corn is an abundant crop. You will find it in sliced bread, crackers, cereal, snack foods, soda, fruit drinks, frozen dinners, and so much more. 
Just read the labels and you will find out on your own how many products contain high fructose corn syrup. Why is it bad? Well, it's a man-made sweetener that extends the shelf life of many products, essentially a preservative, and it has zero nutritional value along with a high calorie price. Although made from corn, it does not have the same nutritional value as corn because it's produced with chemicals. It destroys all of that nutritional value and fiber that's in corn. So avoid it at all costs. Next no-no, do not go to sleep shortly after eating your last meal. Whenever you eat your last meal, whether it be at 6 or at 10, as many of us like me have very different schedules than the rest of the world, you must wait three hours before going to bed. Going to bed any sooner will store all of that food as fat. Okay guys, those were your basic do's and don'ts. Get used to them for the next week and we'll be back here next week to discuss even more. And remember, you have free online coaching for me for the next three weeks. So feel free to send me an email and sign up at GratzillaTV.com. Now, we're gonna go on to some fitness. I'm going to give you a few key exercises to do in the next week. Try to do them three to five times a week and let me know how you feel. All right, everyone, let's get ready to move. First, you want to start with a five to seven minute dynamic warm up. And by that, I mean warming up all of your different muscle groups. Do some jogging in place, some shoulder rolls, stretches. Just make sure that your whole body is nice and warm. Then grab a pair of weights, anywhere from 3 to 15 pounds, depending on what challenges you and provides you with enough resistance to do all of these repetitions. Make sure that you're able to complete all of the repetitions. So I'm going to grab just one. Here I've got five pounds. And we're going to do an exercise that I like to call the figure eight. So you're going to bring the weight up to the side and touch your foot right behind you. We're actually making the shape of a figure eight. This is a great functional exercise because it mimics everyday movement. Make sure that you're really using your core. Bending those knees and back up. Good. Other side. And sit. Now I'm going to grab this other weight and we're going to do another dynamic exercise that I like to call the tri-bot. And that's because you get your triceps, your biceps, and a squat in all in one time. So here's how it goes. Bicep curl, tricep extension and squat at the same time, back up. So make sure they really think about what you're doing with this exercise. I'm going to show you from the side. Extend, back up. Really squeeze when you come back up. So make sure that you really control this in order to get the most from it. Next, we're going to do a two-part exercise. So this is a little bit tricky. Make sure that your knees are soft. We're going to raise our arms up to the sides, lateral raise, and you're going to change to this shape and push it up. Bring it back down through here and down your side. Again, lift up, change, push, bring it back down, squeeze your shoulder blades together and down. Lift, change, push up, back down to your sides, and lift, change, up, squeeze shoulder blades down a little faster, and lift, push, squeeze, down, lift, push, squeeze, and down, good, squeeze, Okay, now we're gonna lie on our side and we're going to do some leg lifts. 
You wanna keep your back leg bent, foot on the floor, flex your front leg, and pulse up. This is a tried but true exercise that is really, really great for your hips, thighs, especially your inner thighs. Saddlebag area, and we're gonna get to the outer thighs in just a moment. So you wanna make sure that this is a nice and controlled movement. Put your hands on your inner thigh and see how that feels. Last eight. Good, switch to the top leg. Make sure it's parallel to the floor and pulse up. Go ahead and feel your outer thigh and see how that's working. You should feel a burn right around here. Again, this movement is very controlled so that you get the most out of the exercise. Don't use momentum. That's cheating. And last eight. Excellent, switching sides. Flex the front leg, pulse up. You can read a book while you're here. These are really, really great exercises to really slim and tone the legs. Last eight. Good, switching to outer thigh. Pulse up, keep it parallel to the floor. If you put your hand on your waist, you'll see that it also targets a bit of your obliques. Last eight. Good. Okay, here's your last sequence. Now we're going to do a Pilates yoga sequence. We're gonna go into plank position. Now the easiest way to do that, hands on the floor, knees on the floor, put one leg out, Get your balance and add the other leg and hold. Really keep everything nice and tight. Now bend those elbows and do push up. Extend. Push up. Extend. Push up and bring your tummy down and arch up. From here, you're gonna push it back to child's pose for a little stretch. Okay, now we're gonna go back into the plank and face forward, so watch. Hold it here. Face forward, you can put your foot on the floor or you can leave it here and extend your arm up. Good, other side. Repeat. Hi. To the back. Excellent. Bring it down and stretch up. Back to child's pose. Okay, now let's come up for a little stretch. You're going to give your right leg a hug. We're going to do a spinal twist. One of my favorite stretches. Put your arm across your thigh. Deep breath in. And exhale as you twist back.
Good. Put that leg on top and stretch forward. This feels really great after those outer thigh exercises. Give your left leg a hug. Arm across the thigh, deep breath in. And exhale as you push. Good, leg on top of the thigh. Now, if this is too much for you, you can bring them further apart. Or if you'd like more of a stretch, you can bring them in real close and twist to the opposite side of your thigh. Excellent. Now bring your right arm across. Give it a tug. And look right. Behind the head. And switch. Left arm across, look left. And behind the head. Good, let go, one more stretch. Go into a straddle position, whatever your second position is. This is called second position in dance, okay? So you can be here or here, wherever is comfortable for you. We're gonna stretch out those inner thighs. So reach over. And other side. Great. You want to follow up this routine with 30 to 45 minutes of cardiovascular exercise. My cardio of choice is an aerobics or dance class. So you can use the elliptical, the Stairmaster, treadmill, walking, running, any type of cardio that you like for 30 to 45 minutes. And I'll see you right back here next week for some more exercises and your diet plan. Okay guys, I hope you've enjoyed Bikini Plan Part 1 and I'll see you right back here next week where we'll have part two and discuss some more exercises and detailed recipes for your meal plan. Don't forget to send me an email and I look forward to hearing from you. Yellow TV.com